Uh, talking, I suppose, what, I'll, I'll, I'll use this to bring in another scoop that we're talking about that, uh, that's on small screen right now. And that's actually, it's actually been covered on Geek Hosty, by the way, just recently, is oh. that talks between Emily Blunt uh, and Marvel for Fantastic Four, for their Fantastic Ooh, Four role. That's have, a heavy hitter right there. They've broken down. So she's not playing Sue Storm. Ah. In, in Four. If they had Emily Blunt for Sue Storm, it would be over. <laughs> the, she is I, a spectacular A-list top tier actress. Is. Yeah one of the problems uh so the, here's what the source told me what i can confirm is that emily blunt has now ruled herself out of the running for sue storm in the ff in ff fantastic four uh she was in talks with marvel but opted not to sign the deal with them because it would have been um for multiple films she didn't want to put her family through that and then she said then the the uh, sorry, the source said, uh, things with Krasinski aren't so clear. He has been in, um, in contact with Marvel for the role of Reed Richards. However, there still hasn't been any new developments yet. That's her um, husband, right? Yeah, that's her husband. Man, yeah, that would have been freaking perfect. Yeah. Yeah, Blunt turning down the, the role, the Sue Storm role, might be indicative of what could happen with Krasinski. The idea was to have both of them in the movie as Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman. Heck so yeah. it, it sounds as though uh, one of the ideas that they're talking about now at Marvel is actually having um, lesser known actors and a more diverse cast. They should. Uh, they, yeah. I, I call it the George Lucas route. Yes. Take yes. a spectacular no name person and let them stay with Marvel for years and build them up. Cause if you really think about it, that's what they did in the beginning with Chris Evans. Chris Evans wasn't really that big like that. And yeah. Robert Downey Jr. He was in the slops and yeah. they brought him back up. Hey, do that. Yeah, so you don't it, have to. You know, this is the beautiful thing about writing a great story. Even back in the caveman days, that's what people get sucked into the yeah. CGI and all that stuff. That's the bonus. But yeah. if you got great story, great acting, the rest is is easy street. <laughs> so easy. This, you, you, you're right. Like they should really just focus on getting the right person for the role. And what one of one of the reasons I think they actually were talking to them was because I think there was a lot of pressure. Uh, for Marvel to try and get them in the film. Uh, so <laughs> it's Charlie Hunnam from <laughs> Mr. Fantastic, Rob Lowe for Human Talk. Okay, it's it's like a it's it's uh, like a running gag that I do not think much of Charlie Hunnam. I like I, I like Rob Lowe. I'll I think take much of me. Uh, the, I don't, okay, what do you think? Why does his name keep on coming up for Green Arrow? Why he's saying every... he's coming up for Wolverine too for some odd <sighs> reason. He's a terrible actor. <laughs> <It's just> a, <laughs> I mean, because he wasn't. That, I like Pacific Rim, but he didn't stand out acting wise to me. He was bad in, in Pacific Rim. He was bad yeah. in that film. He's he's bad in every movie he's in, apart from The Gentleman and Sons of Anarchy, which was the series he was in. He's pretty good in that. But yeah. apart from that, apart from that, I, I I think he's been bad in everything he's in. But yeah, but uh, as far as Emily Blunt's concerned, one of the reasons why Marvel was talking to. John Krasinski and Emily Blunt was because of, I think, fan pressure. And they were, they were, they wanted to see whether they could get them into the film. But then I think, I also think John Watts had a lot to say about this, uh, that he really wanted to work with a younger cast. Uh, John Watts is, he's the director of the Spider-Man films and uh, he likes working with young actors like Tom Holland, for instance, before he was Spider-Man. He was kind of in a lot of he was in stuff, but no one he wasn't a household name. No one knew who Tom Holland really was. I'm gonna was. be honest with you, my friend. What? I don't <laughs> give a damn about Tom Holland. Really? I, no, man, I just I, he just not Peter Parker to me. <laughs> oh, I like Tom He's Holland. He's just a goofy guy. <laughs> now you might think I'm stupid for this. Oh, you're gonna say Andrew Garfield, aren't you? Do you I like know. Andrew Garfield? <laughs> I, 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 oh, I don't no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Okay, the problem with Andrew Garfield is he he's a good Spider Man, but a terrible Peter Parker. See, I think the other way. He's a great Peter Parker. No, he's but not a great cool. Spider Man. He's too cool. He's too smooth. It's like Peter Parker's meant to be a dork. He's meant yeah. he, like literally the best Peter Parker is Tobey Maguire. It's Tobey like, because he he, yeah. he played the dork role. He, exactly. But to but, me, Tom Holland is even cool. Too cool. But to be Peter okay, Parker. Okay, what I'll say is that he and he were. Buddies, weren't you? <laughs> Sorry, that's a clip that we like playing. Uh, but basically, 
the what I'd say is to, uh, Toby Maguire was a good Peter Parker to begin with. But the minute if you, I mean, I don't know what your knowledge of Spider Man is, but if you watch, if you read the comics and watch the animated series, I'm a I'm a massive fan of the animated. Series. I love the animated fight series. I, I, I was raised so on that. So, me too. Me too. Yeah. I, I used to watch that all the time. And the X-Men animated series too. Oh, I was so raised good. on that. You and he were buddies, weren't you?